So TikTok is always changing. And one of the biggest complaints about the platform is that self-promotion, well, falls really flat. Since when you make self-promotional posts on TikTok, well, they flop more commonly than when the television networks do another terrible show where adults talk about how they don't get pronouns, these damn kids with their TikToks. Ah. But the last half year, I've really seen that change as users have learned to make self-promotional TikToks more intriguing. I mean, you see these videos of people lip syncing into the camera? Those are working well. And yes, many of the unknown DIY artists this works for are sometimes posting videos of them doing this in various ways 30 to 60 times before the earworm of the song hits the people who regularly get served their videos and they watch them through. And after the earworm is in their head, they watch them repeatedly and drive up the video till it starts to go viral. Since self-promotional TikTok seemed to not do much, the next deduction was is, what's the purpose of all that time and money you spend on a music video if it's useless on TikTok? Since TikTok breaks so many artists, why bother with your limited budget on a music video, right? But I've seen how you can make music videos that will build relationships with fans and get them to listen to your full song and deepen your fan relationship while also making them work on TikTok to be great content for your music that really does numbers. So this video, I'll show you how to turn your music video into TikTok content the algorithm likes. So one of the more weird things I've experienced when I'm consulting with musicians is that lately they really are skeptical that spending money on music videos is worthy of their budget. Since when you see the potential spread of TikToks, Reels, and YouTube Shorts, well, by the numbers, it seems weird to invest in the music video since you want to go mega viral, which I have to say is a little short-sighted. Since when I hear every musician who has a viral TikTok or a real or short complaint about is that it doesn't then equal streams and what they really want is streams. Yet a music video is actually streams of a song and they're thinking about neglecting that. I seem to recall all of you wetting your beds when all the major labels drop your favorite artist for not hitting numbers but you say the artist is everything to you but they're dropping them because they're not getting numbers and you're concerned about those numbers. Hmm. <laughs> Funny how that works, isn't it? Then the other thing musicians complain about is when they just get one song to blow up on a playlist or on TikTok is that no one forms relationships with them. But the number one relationship builder with an artist is a music video. And yet they keep thinking about cutting that from their budget. But no one ever said musicians had logic unless it's installed on their Mac. Thanks everyone, I'll be here all week. But why not think of a strategy that tries both short form views on TikTok and can build relationships? Since like many things, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Wait, why are we skinning a cat? I love cats. And I definitely don't want to see any more people wearing leopard prints since I grew up in New Jersey and saw enough of that as a youth. Anyway, this looks at the problem as black and white or an either or issue. Instead of asking the question, how do I film a music video that I can turn into numerous TikToks that will do well in the algorithm while making a music video fans will love and watch repeatedly to build a relationship with, which then gets those fans to share it and send it to their friends in its long form and your fan base to spread. You can do it all all in one. And my friends, I'm gonna show you how Caroline Polachek did just that. Now, if you're not familiar, Caroline is one of the most innovative artists of our time, really ahead of the curve, and frankly can sing better than 99.9% .9 of the planet without it being the least bit American Idol show off cringe stuff. And while she's been on a major label in the past, she's technically a DIY artist who owns her own label right now. She's also familiar with TikToks going viral since her song and dance for So Hot You're Hurting My Feelings turned into a trend on TikTok and spread the song massively. Anyway, so I've seen this technique done a little bit, but it really hit home when I saw her do it and then I was listening to her appearance on my favorite podcast How Long Gone and she gave up the game a bit and it all made sense. Let's listen. The Welcome to My Island video for example had 18 scenes and the idea was that each one of those scenes could get posted individually as their own reels or TikToks or Twitter posts without compromising the integrity of the video at all because there is no narrative, the sequence is of no significance and the chaos of the jumble is the whole point. So no matter how you consume it, you're getting the point. Each one of these scenes is one slot. So technically the edit was very simple. So what does she mean by this? So if you watch the video for her bagger and one of my favorite songs of 2023, Welcome to My Island, you can see it's exactly as she describes. 18 scenarios where it seems like she filmed them through the entirety of the song and then shows which part of the video to use each scenario for. And then if you shoot over to her TikTok, well, you can see she did exactly as she said and posted them there and has a bunch of them that did numbers and promoted the song. And all she needed to do was chop them down so they'd loop well for TikTok. And this is important since I would argue the relationships a fan makes 
with a video and the repeated listens make it way more valuable to invest your money. But like I said, this isn't an either or, or situation. Instead one where if you think of the video properly, you can have no compromises in your video and if anything, make it more focused and make it so you can turn it into short form videos in minutes by really thinking about how you frame someone in it so it converts to 16 by nine and how you're gonna make it so that these scenarios can be used in short form as well. Since let's always remember, no one who's smart's goal is to just keep users on TikTok. It's to get them to build relationships with you and music videos are how you do that best. So if you show all these people who are bored enough to sit through hours of Biden, Trump and Obama gaming, well surely seeing that a song they like has a music video is often a better alternative because these are sure getting old fast. Now let's be honest here. Some of you who actually have functioning brains are like, Jesse, if videos where people just sing in their bedroom are working for getting viral TikToks, I'm just sticking to that. And that brings me to another lesson that we have seen time and time again. So if you're familiar with the concept of divergent streams, this is what a divergent stream looks like. Essentially, it's a theory I often talk about where each side is going further and further away from each other as time goes on and the middle becomes increasingly irrelevant and something no one consumes or puts any attention towards. For example, throughout music, you have things like in the 2000s, you had NSYNC's song Pop along with Shania Twain that are the most maximalist overproductions in music history. Seriously, listen, these productions are way more overproduced than anything on the radio today. And then on the other side, you had the Strokes and the White Stripes who were achieving massive success with records that were barely produced at all and as raw as can be. Throughout time, this exists, even today. And it's exactly why you see the popularity of a bedroom pop song like Steve Lacey's Bad Habit exist at the same time as Bad Buddy's hit, well, my gringo ass ain't attempting to pronounce that song title. Anyway, the way this relates to your video and TikTok is you're able to do both with the music video as you're able to take advantage of the high production music video scenes you shoot and still do some lo-fi stuff you shoot yourself on your phone singing in your backyard and take advantage of two things audiences love, both the lo-fi and the hi-fi. The raw, honest vibes of you and your camera in a relatable backyard scenario and then the spectacle of a great shot in your music video that has one hell of a vibe help to show your range to people and see that you're an artist worth paying attention attention to. The fact is what works on TikTok right now is a variety of promotions and not just throwing content at the wall, but instead making content that has a lot of movement and is intriguing and both raw and polished can be intriguing. And like I was saying before, so many TikTokers are doing 30 to 60 TikToks of the same song before it blows up and just pushing it until it goes viral. So if your next video, you take the simple philosophy that's been done for videos for the past 50 years, where you perform the song in various scenarios all the way through through, you could then take from each scenario you filmed in the part of the song that has the hook that you shot and simply crop it to work in a 16 by 9 portrait frame. And well, you've got yourself short form TikToks you could repurpose and help drive views to your songs and streams. And with that music video, you now have some of that higher quality content that can build relationships. And if you pepper that with low effort content like lip syncs, well, you're on your way to having a ton of content to promote each song with. But some of you may have noticed that Caroline doesn't do exactly what I say, and she plays different parts of the song in her TikToks and not just the hook. Now, from what I've observed recently on TikTok, the real key a lot of these unknown artists who go from, let's say, zero monthlies on Spotify to hundreds of thousands, what I see over and over again is the trick is repeating the hook. We have to remember, Caroline's pretty established. She's been around for a minute, has a pre-existing fan base. She has to play by different rules than you. And while you can learn from her, I think what I've really learned from all the underground artists who are breaking with this technique is they're repeating the same hook of their song over and over in the videos. They choose one part of it, and that's every video over and over and over again. So I would encourage you to get the color corrected versions of each scene in your video where you sing the hook and then make your shorts for TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram from those since that takes minutes. And if you have 18 scenarios in your video like Caroline, well, that's only 12 different times you need to lip sync your song in the shower or twerking on top of your grandfather's head. And if you want to take this even further, I've seen some artists sing their future singles in video scenarios for future content and then use that later since let's remember our goals with TikToks is to just be in scenarios where people will watch to the end because they're intrigued by what they're watching. If you got a good scene, well, that doesn't go stale fast and you can use it for a couple songs. 
Another great trick I talk about all the time is that whenever you're filming a video, half the battle is getting the lighting and setting the scene. So once that's done, film a few costume changes in that scene and get various songs in those different costumes if it works well so you have tons more content to pick from. And oh yeah, when I say costumes, don't get intimidated, you slobs. Sometimes I mean just changing your dirty jeans and maybe changing your shirt. I know that's a lot to ask from somebody. Hey. And a lot of you may still feel like you don't have the budget to do any of this. But honestly, I see artists every day making amazing videos where they have one of the recent generations of phones, one 200-ish dollar light with some diffusion that can create a lot of light in a room, and then this $100 gem from Aperture, which is called an MC that can do light in any color. And honestly, that's all they need to make videos that get tons of views and look really good. So don't count yourself out if your budget sucks. A little color correction tutorial after you film some stuff and you're there. So now that you've learned how to make your music video go viral on TikTok, I bet you'd like to know how to make the best music video possible. Well, you're in luck because I made a video on that, which is on the screen now or in the description, which you should really learn since it will help give you another piece of this puzzle. Thanks for watching.